again. Um, so this is a follow-up to my previous video. Uh, this is less of a tutorial and more of sort of an exploration of what's what the compilation process is really doing and um, what the Turing machine is doing at the lowest level. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So this is this is the program we wrote last time, uh, checking whether or not all square numbers are less than five. And we're going to go ahead and compile it again. Um, but this time when we compile it, we're going to try and do it a little slower and see what the various steps are that it's doing along the way. So I'm going to compile this not to a Turing machine right away, but first I'm going to compile it to TMD. So what TMD is, is it's actually, at the top level we have Laconic, and at the bottom level we have uh, a, a single state Turing machine. In the middle we have this intermediate representation, which I call TMD, Turing Machine Descriptor. And what it is, is it's an abstraction. It's, 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 it's an abstraction of a multi-tape Turing machine uh, with a function stack. Um, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see it in a little more detail. Oops, we'll call it TMD compiler.py. Squares are small. Beautiful. OK, so uh, it printed a bunch of stuff. This stuff, as we're going to see, is actually the names of TMD functions that it imported. So we're going we're gonna to take a look at that. Um, so now that we've compiled the TMD, in order to see the result, we're going to go to the TMD directory. First, we're going to go to TMD dears. That's where uh, the thing that we compiled is hanging out. So this squares dot small right, squares are small, small right here is the result of our compilation. Um, it's in fact a directory because all TMD programs uh, are directories. So if we look at the squares are small directly directory, we can see what's in it. And a lot of the stuff we don't recognize, but um, a couple of things look familiar. So this, this square.tmd and inker.tmd are function files that correspond to the function that we wrote here and the function that we wrote here. And main.tmd is uh, this logic right here. Everything else, pretty much, all this built-in stuff is stuff that was imported um, from what's called the Laconic uh, Standard Library. You can find it here. If you go two steps back, there's this directory called the Laconic Standard Library, which contains all of the possible built-in files. So what these built-in files are doing is they're explaining how to do addition and multiplication on a multi-tape Turing machine. Um, so this, the, for example, this, this, this times right here is what caused us, presumably, to import built-in multiply. Um, right, so now that we're at this level, if we want to, we can, uh, we can run this thing as a TMD program. Um, so, and we can just take a quick look at what that looks like. So uh, why don't we do that? Um, Let's go to uh, TMD meta, and then run the TMD interpreter. Um, and we're going to say squares are small. Once again, without extension. All right, so it runs for a while, and it finished. And so if we sort of, we can, we can spread this thing out a little bit. It's going to be tricky to see everything at once, because I've I zoomed in so much. There we go. So as we can see, um, there's a bunch of tapes. So there's, there's five tapes, um, one for each variable in the program. So <laughs> at the top level, there's only two variables in the program. TMD, the, the compilation process, automatically introduces a few more variables with funny names um, in order to hold values, like hold intermediate values that it otherwise wouldn't be able to. And uh, here's the function stack, and here's the current values of the tapes. And so as we can sort of see, um, the way it represents an integer on the tape is under, there's underscores everywhere, except for uh, there's a bunch of ones, and the, you can count the ones, and however many ones there are, that's the value of the number. And then there's an E at the end to, to indicate that the number has finished. Um, so that's the basic way that numbers are encoded in TMD. All right, so that's, that, that gives us a good sense of what's going on in the intermediate representation. And now the next part of the process is compiling the TMD program to an actual single tape Turing machine. Um, and all right, so what people are usually interested in is a two-symbol Turing machine. I'm actually going to compile to a four-symbol Turing machine. And this four-symbol Turing machine is, is not going to be optimized in terms of state count. In fact, I haven't bothered doing these optimizations because most of the time when mathematicians worry about these things, they only care about two-symbol Turing machines. The four-symbol Turing machine option is only here so that we have something to look at that's like remotely intelligible. Because the two-symbol Turing machine, I mean, you, got, you caught a glimpse of it in the last video. It was really hard to look at. Uh, the four-symbol Turing machine is still hard to look at, but you can, you can get a better sense of what's going on. So uh, you'll see what I mean. Um, I'm gonna, so I'm just going to go ahead and compile this thing to a four-symbol Turing machine. So I'm going to say Python TMD to four-symbol TM compiler. Uh, once again, squares are small. There we go. And now let's head to uh, the TM4 directory. So that's going to be under TM, TM4. 
and then tm4 files. So this is what it looks like. So we can just have a quick look at what our uh, file is. Um, so squares are small tm4. So as you can see now, this, the states have uh, four symbols coming out of them. Underscore one each and e. And so why don't we go ahead and run this thing? So I actually have a terminal pre-prepared for the purpose of running this, um, which is going to do a lot better than the normal way. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to run uh, tm4 simulator.py uh, for 500,000 steps. So I'm going to I'm going to simulate this Turing machine for 500,000 steps. And I'm, what this dash l means is I'm only going to print every 10,000th step because otherwise there's so much prints of the standard out that it takes a long time. So I'm just going to go ahead and print this. And it finished, so it ran for 500,000 steps and didn't halt yet. And this gives us a good look at what the Turing machine looks at. It looks like roughly after um, after the initial phases of the Turing machine have completed. So we've got the Turing machine that's sort of covered in symbols. Um, so let me just let me just break down what's going on over here. So in in this area, sort of delineated over here and over here, this is where the variable uh, variable values are stored. So in TMD. I'm just going to go back to the TMD file so we, 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 we get a sense. Um, uh, in TMD, remember, we had uh, five variables. So this, 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 this is variable number uh, uh, one right here. This is variable number two, variable number, th number three, variable number four, variable number five. These guys right here indicate the, 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 the name of the variable. And these guys right here uh, indicate uh, the value of the variable. So what that's telling us is if we sort of look at... Um, if we go to TMD history, we can we can we can take a look at this. So micro TMD histories. Oops. Um, micro uh, squares are small. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. I haven't run it. Okay. Let me just go to TMD meta and uh, run TMD interpreter py shell f dash s. Now it should show up in TMD histories. So I just asked it to run it in such a way that it would, it would print the history into a history file. And then ask it to show us the history. So this is, this is, once again, what it looks like sort of in TMD form. So here we've got five mini tapes. And so that's what's going on here. So this is the first tape, this is the first tape, the second tape, the third tape, the fourth tape, and the fifth tape. And what, I, what I've got here is a little text file that gives us the mapping from um, the sort of identifiers to the variables. So this means that we're looking at variable A. This means that we're looking at variable B, variable exclamation point zero, exclamation point one, exclamation point two. All right, so that's what this stuff is. This, this part corresponds to the, to the tape values. This stuff right here um, is the current function stack. So right now there's just uh, the, the initial function call, the, the function call to main over here. And then all the way over here, we have a bunch of garbage looking stuff. This is the program code. This is what the Turing so the Turing machine starts by writing all this stuff onto the tape, and then it goes back and forth reading this stuff and uh, seeing what it tells it. So this 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 stuff corresponds to the actual stuff that we see in the TMD file. So if I if I if I exit this and show us what is in the actual TMD files, we can open up just some random file here. Let's let's open up the multiplication file, for example, built-in multiply. TMD. This is what a TMD file looks like, and this is what it looks like after it's been compiled to, you know, an encoding in, in terms of these four symbols. So these uh, symbols right here encode the meaning of these TMD commands over here. And these TMD commands, I mean, you can sort of recognize what's going on. These are the arguments, the multiply function. This is a function call. This is a return statement. And this stuff is telling it, okay, read tape X. Um, if you read it with an E, then go to this value, for example. Um, so this is what's going on uh, at the level of the Turing machine. Um, so when I run the file, uh, so I'm, I'm, I ran it for only 500,000 steps this time, but I'm, I'm just going to run it for as long as it wants to run now, and we're going to get a sense for what happens while it's running. It's going to be like a little movie. It'll be great. Okay, so here we go. So for the time being, not much. Okay, so now, now stuff is starting to happen. So let's try and get a sense for what's going on here. So this is, these are the variable values. This is where the function stack is. So let's look at the function stack. So at the bottom, we've got the call to main. Then next, we've got a call to 
one ee1, which corresponds to built-in assign five. So it's it's assigning the value of five to variable e1, which we're, we were told was uh, exclamation point one. So as we can see, here we go. It's assigning the value of five to this guy right here. So it's tacking on ones until it gets the value of five, and now it's done. So it's 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 just added a new function call on. So now it's 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 performing a greater than. So I think what it's, it's trying to do now is I bet it's comparing zero to five. And it's going to find that zero is less than five, and so it's going to be dissatisfied. Um, uh, all right, so now it's now it's on to the next function call already. So it's it's on one one e one. So it's squaring something. So I bet now what it's doing is it's squaring the value. We're, we're, we're probably here now. It's squaring the value of a and loading it into b. So it's squaring zero and getting zero. Um, but that might take it a while because everything's slow with these Turing machines. Um, okay, so here we've got the value zero. Here we've got the value zero. I bet what it's going to do is it's going to square this put it here, and uh, that'll be that. But it could take a while. Yeah, it could take quite a while, huh? All right, this is, oh, oh, oh. Nope, OK. <laughs> I thought maybe it was done uh, squaring. Not quite yet. Oh, there we go. All right, now we're on to the next function. So now it's forming an increment. So I expect that uh, a will increase by one by the time this function is over. Um, so this increment could take a while. So I'm, I'm just going to cut it off. So remember when I told you that uh, running the Turing machine would take two hours? So fortunately, we've got a four-simple alpha alphabet instead of a two-simple alphabet. So it'll only take half as long. That's still an entire hour. I doubt you guys want to watch this thing run for an hour. Fortunately, I have the magical ability to speed up time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stop this right here, and we are going to watch a pre-recorded movie. Here it is. Excellent. So um, why don't we start where we... So this, this, is, this is at the start of the function call, so this, this, this is stuff you've watched already. And now I'm just going to speed it up. So I'm going to speed it up by a factor of 10. So it's going 10 times faster than it, than it was going before. So this, we're, we're back to where we were. So it's doing greater than. It's doing square. Um, so we've seen this all. And now it's doing increment. So I, I bet by the end of this increment call, this thing will read h1e. So it'll have a 1 before the e, indicating that there's, oh, oh, sorry, I, I was looking at the wrong variable. So increment, right. So it incremented a. And now a looks like, it looks like h1e. That's, that, that, that means there's a value of 1 there. Remember that you count the number of ones, and that's the value of the variable there. All right, so now it's doing it's doing another greater than. So it's probably checking whether or not one is greater than five. It's going to find that it isn't. Um, all right, so this is this is sort of what it looks like. And as you can see, things are spreading out with time. So things things are getting further and further apart. And the reason for that is there's there's the risk as these these numbers get bigger that uh, there, there, there's a chance of overflow, right? That I, I I've, I've sort of delineated a certain amount of space for each tape, and obviously the the sort of abstraction of the tape is that it's infinite, but in fact, there's only, I only allowed it so much space. So what, what needs to happen is every time I manipulate the tape, I increase the amount of space I have allocated to it. Because there's sort of no reason why not. I, I could perform checks to see if the space is really necessary, but that would be sort of, it would, it would use states unnecessarily because I don't, I don't care about using more space, I just care about using more states. So I, I just go ahead and increase the amount of space every time there's the possibility that space is needed. And that causes things to get spread out a lot with time. So now, okay, so let's see what it's, what it's trying to do now. It's doing a, a greater than again. So it's, it's, it's okay, so we've, we've, here we've got a 2. I bet it's going to um, square the 2 at some point probably, right? Um, let's see, are, are we still doing, this is, this is pretty fast, huh? So it's squaring the 2, and I bet soon we're going to have a 4 put into B. Well, by, by the time this 1e1 one, one e one call, which we, we, we decide is the, the square function finishes, we'll have uh, 4 in this register right here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I just wrote four there. Look at that. Okay, and now it's probably going to try and do, it's probably going to try and compare four to five and see which is bigger. Um, right, so it's probably going to put five in this register now. It's got four loaded over here. Um, so it's still doing, oh, it's incrementing right now. So it's going to increment this value so that the value becomes three instead of two. As you can see, everything sort of happens at a snail's pace here. I'm going to speed things up a little bit by a factor of three. Right, so it just incremented things. All right, things are going quickly now, huh? Check this out. Now it's going it's load, it's loaded five into this register. It's gonna compare that to uh, the value four, presumably, 
and it's going to find that 4 is smaller. Right, right now it's doing the, uh, right now it's doing, oh, it's doing another square. It's already moved on. Oh, look at that. It's, it's putting a 9 somewhere. Okay, so it, it decided it wants to square 3, and now it's loading the value of 9 into b. And, yeah, so soon enough it's going to, um, so now, and now it's incrementing a. So it, we, we, we just, we've incremented a before we bothered to test that, in fact, b, which is 9, is, less, is, is not less than 5. But now what it's going to do is it's going to put 5 here, and it's going to compare 9 to 5, and it's going to find that 9 is bigger, and so it's going to halt. Here we go. They're comparing, they're comparing. Look at those, those H's move. Yep, okay, it halted. All right, great. So that's, that's <laughs> the basics of uh, TMD and what the Turing machine is doing at the bottom level. So all of this, so it's intelligible because there's four symbols there, right? But um, when you compile it to two symbols, all, the, all those, all those, when, 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 it, when it's a two-symbol alphabet, all it's doing is it's taking each of these symbols and, you know, turning it into the, the two-symbol version. So if, if, if I recall correctly, the underscore is AA, the H is uh, BA, the 1 is AB, and the E is BB. Um, so it's, it's, just, it's just a direct mapping of these, these, this, this four-symbol alphabet to the, the two-symbol alphabet. But this way, it's much, much easier to read. Um, all right, so that's about it. Uh, thank you very much.